bond energies. So when you have two atoms, so there's one and there's the other one, um, they can be attracted to each other and end up sharing a bond. And this energy associated with that is going to have a particular stability. So at this point here, it is most stable. Um, this is why they get close together, because as they're further apart over here, they're less stable. And the reason why nuclear fusion is so hard is because if you get them any closer together, then the energy goes like way, way too high. So they have a particular way, or at least several different ways that the atoms can become stable uh, and one is by forming these bonds so you can imagine if these are two hydrogen atoms um, they could be in a more con a more stable configuration if they were to be bonded together or have this attractive force existing between the two of them more stable anyways than if they were apart and definitely more stable than if they ended up being any closer together so this energy that results with them being stable is referred to as their bond energy and this is why when atoms form bonds there's always a release of energy and if you wanted to go from the other way and you wanted to break that bond and separate those atoms again then you're going to have to put in energy we can do a simple approximate calculation for the energy required to break those. Um, we're talking covalent bonds here. Um, and so we, we, can, we can find out what the energy is associated with this. And this is called the bond association energy. It is the energy required to break a covalent bond. And depending on who it is that is bonded, there's going to be different energies associated with that. And again, to break the bond it requires energy. If you then form a bond, you're going to be releasing energy. So what you can do is look at a particular chemical reaction which has some things that start off bonded and then it's a chemical reaction so they end up being bonded in some other way and you can find the difference or approximate difference in energies between those two states by going through and selectively calculating for each of the types of bonds you're breaking and then forming and then summing those two values together or those two um, um, the the input of energy and the output of energy, summing that together and getting an overall approximation for the enthalpy change for that reaction. So these bond energies can be used to calculate an estimated delta H value for a given reaction. As long as you know who it is you're dealing with, how they are bonded, then you run through the numbers, basically do a bit of accounting, and then find out um, what, what would the approximate delta H doing without even having to do the reaction. And so you can use a table um, and look up, say, okay, this particular atom bonded to this particular atom, that bond energy is this particular value here. So we can use those values and essentially, again, look at the energy required to break all the bonds that are there and the energy that would be gotten from forming all the new bonds in the products. And we could sum that together. That gives you basically this, this summation equation here, where if you say, okay, if I take the bonds energy um, that we are breaking, so the reactants are held together by these bonds. If we add up all of um, their energy, that's going to be the energy input that we have to put in. We've got to break up those reactants. And again, factor in how many of them we're dealing with. So make sure we have the, the proper um, coefficients, the molar amounts of them. And we're just going to sum them together, however many there are, just sum them all together. And we're going to subtract from that all of the energy that we're going to get by forming the bonds in the products. And again, make sure you apply the proper molar ratios. If there's two of something, then, then you're going to have twice as many of those bonds. Um, and again, we're summing them together. We just do this calculation and that will give us our approximate delta H. So these bond energy, um, they do tend to be average. So you're not going to get an exact delta H for this, um, but it will give you approximate theoretical delta H for that reaction without even having to do the reaction. So how this could be used would be, say, you've got methane and you're looking at the combustion of methane. And so we want to know, OK, I, I don't want to get methane and actually light it on fire, but I do want to know how much energy I'd get if I were to do that. Um, and so we could write the equation here and solve for the delta H for that combustion of methane. And we again realize because we're dealing with a single mole of methane for this particular reaction, it has a coefficient of one, then the delta H for this reaction could also be referred to as the molar enthalpy of combustion for methane because it happens to be already balanced for one mole. Um, but what we need to do is really think about our structural diagrams here to know what bonds we have. So we'd have to know that our methane here that we're going to be breaking apart, each molecule of it is going to have four carbon hydrogen bonds. So then we have to go to our table and we have to say, okay, um, where is the carbon hydrogen bond? There it is there. And this is the kilojoules per mole of these carbon hydrogen bonds. And we've got four of them right here in this methane. So we're going to have to break those all. So we're going to, have to input that amount of energy, 413 kilojoules per mole times four, because there's one, two, three, four that are in there. Now, again, the mole ratio here is one. So it is just dealing with one mole of those methane to do this reaction. 
the oxygen. And again, if you draw out the two of them, then don't forget that there's a coefficient of two there. There are two double bonds with these oxygens. And so when we're talking about multiple bonds there, depending on what table you're using, you gotta make sure you look up the right value, but there's a double bond. Each one is 495 kilojoules per mole, and there's two of them, so we're gonna have to break two of those. So summing all of that breaking or input of energy, um, that's much energy we have to put into the reaction. And then when we form the bonds and the products, that's the energy we're going to get out. And if we find the difference between those two points, that's the delta H. So for the carbon dioxide, uh, it's sort of down here just because it's a particular um, particular double bond. And so those two double bonds, each one is 799. Um, and there's two of them. There's the double bond there and that double bond there. And then the two waters, and again, if you draw both of them out, you don't forget that there are two of them. So we have one, two, three, four oxygen hydrogen bonds and so we have to figure out where the oxygen and why can't I find it here do, 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 do. oxygen hydrogen there we are um, so that each one of those is 467 kilojoules per mole and we have four of them so we'd have to total that in and that's the energy we're going to be getting out of this reaction and again we're going to have an input of energy breaking the bonds we're going to have an output of energy forming the bonds and we sum together all those values and we should have an approximate delta h of course, we'd like to have an XD equation, make sure we put them all in. So again, four of the carbon hydrogen bonds going in that we have to break, two of the double bonded oxygen molecule bonds, that are, they're also gonna have to be broken. And we're gonna subtract from that. We're gonna go down in the amount of energy. It's gonna give off the amount of energy of these two double bonds that we see in the carbon dioxide and the four oxygen hydrogen bonds that we see in the waters and sum all that together. And this will give us our approximate delta H for the molar enthalpy of combustion of methane. And again, approximate value, um, but not bad for not having to light anything on fire.